All right, what I want to talk about today is what I call the anchor paradigm, uh, which is the whole board, but specifically we're going to talk about the top part, which is primarily the definitions. And just getting us all on the same page for how to speak with each other about anchors and be as precise as we can be as we're uh, talking about that topic. Uh, so specifically, we'll start over here with anchor points. Uh, so there's uh, two types of anchor points, single point anchors, where all of your interface is with a single anchor point. Uh, but then you also have multi-point anchors where you maybe have two, three, four, uh, multiple anchors that all come together to a focal point. And uh, so uh, that's the two definitions of anchor points. Uh, as far as anchor connections go, how we connect to those anchors, you've got direct connect and indirect connections. Direct connections are where you take the rope and you tie it directly to the anchor. Uh, so envision a rope going around and tying a bowline or a figure eight follow through, something like that. Uh, alternatively, you've got indirect connections. That's where you're using webbing, armor tech slings, just some sort of secondary interface with the anchor that you then interface the rope with. Um, competency, uh, this is uh, uh, new-ish to us. We introduced it in 2017, so it's been around for about five or six years now. Uh, but uh, that's where you have marginal anchors. Those are anchors that are not competent to be used by themselves. Uh, they either need to be used in multiples or better yet would be to back tie, uh, back tie those anchors to shore them up to, to increase their competency. Uh, next, you've got single function anchors. Single function anchor is defined as an anchor point with which you can put one thing on. Uh, so we prefer to run redundant systems. So you've got a separate load paths between the anchor and the load. And so you would need two single function anchors in order for those two ropes to get connected to. Uh, whereas a single function anchor can only take one of those. Uh, if you're looking for a number, number for that anchor point strength in a single function anchor, uh, 5,000 pounds is the ocean number. As far as multi-function, multi-function means that the anchor is uh, really strong and it is competent enough to support both halves of a two rope system and or multiple functions. So it might be that you rig your two working ropes off of that multi-function anchor, but then also rig a rope access line or something like that. Uh, but to, it's competent to the point that you can attach more than one thing to it. And so that's what we define as multi-function. Uh, this paradigm is intended to uh, really clearly define how we achieve redundancy. And uh, we value redundancy in our systems. Uh, the specific definition of redundancy is that there is a separate, i.e. a redundant, a separate load path from the harness through to the connection to the anchors. And so uh, harness as it uh, pertains to a rescuer would be just their rope access harness. Uh, the harness as it pertains to a patient would be whatever patient packaging device that we're using, whether that's a Ferno, a Stokes, uh, spec pack, skid, any of those kind of things. We want redundant, i.e. separate load paths from the connection from that harness through to the anchors. So the way that we evaluate a system for redundancy is what we call a critical point test. A critical point within a system is a point that if that point were to go away, the load would hit the deck, like there would be a, a catastrophic failure. And so we don't need, we don't want critical points within our systems. So the way we evaluate for redundancy is by evaluating the system uh, using the critical point test where we're surveying for redundancies by trying to identify a critical point. Uh, for the most part, if you find a critical point, you need to reconfigure the system or make an adjustment so that you can achieve redundancy so that critical point no longer exists. But as we build systems and a few of our standard practices uh, will cause a critical point to occur. And when we do that, either A, make it redundant, or B, you can do what's called a critical point variance test. And so the best example that I have of that is if I have a multi-point anchor that the anchor system itself is configured in a way that it could be considered multi-function, it all comes together to a rigging plate. And then I may run my two rope system off of that rigging plate. Uh, in that case, that rigging plate is a critical point. And so uh, is it acceptable to be used as a critical point? Uh, and some things can be engineered to the point that they are redundant by design. 
Uh, think of an airplane with two wings. There's not two wings on each side. There are a total of four. Uh, there's only one on each side because it's engineered to the point that redundancy is not necessary. And so let's, the way we evaluate that rigging plate to decide, is it uh, redundant by design? Can we accept it as a critical point? Uh, we put it through our critical point variance, which has four points. One, is it strong enough? Uh, meaning, uh, is it strong enough to support the load? Is it within our uh, static system safety factors, which for us is seven to one, uh, or within the working load limit of the device in question? Two, is it a quality manufacturer, meaning it's made by a quality manufacturer, it's third party tested. Uh, typically it has some sort of uh, um, CE stamp or an NFPA stamp on it indicating that it's been tested. Uh, third, is, is it being used as intended? Uh, rigging plate being pulled in multiple directions, that's how it's intended to be used. Uh, alternatively, if you maybe get a pulley in the mix and you start pulling pulley cheeks sideways, that's not how it's intended to be used, so it would not therefore pass. Uh, and then our last element is, is there human influence? By and large, any flaw in our system will come from us. We, we bring the most flaws into our system. And so uh, a rigging play is just a hunk of metal. Like we, uh, the humans aren't involved in opening and closing or affecting its strength or its capability. Uh, alternatively, say a carabiner, uh, the human has to influence the carabiner in order for it to get it interfaced with something. So a carabiner would not pass a critical point variance because the human can mess it up. It could not get locked. Uh, it could get wedged open. Uh, there's, there's just flaws that can occur from the human influence. Uh, so uh, if it passes these four points, you may choose to accept it as a critical point. But then again, uh, depending on who's uh, rigging the system or who's in charge, they may decide to uh, cause it or may decide to reconfigure it to make it redundant. Uh, so these are our definitions within the anchor paradigm. And so as we build systems and we talk anchors, uh, these are the terms that we can use to do that with clarity.